Hello everyone, David here, Mix Best TV. Hope you guys are having a great day. Results are in. So I had already filmed the reveal video, the video in which I say which one was the analog mix and which one was the in the box. And I will attach that video to this bit that I'm filming right now, two days after the blind test was released to take a look at what you guys think and what you guys wrote in the comment section because it's actually very, very interesting. And uh, I hope you will enjoy these results, so to speak, as much as I did. So first of all, which mix won? Well, 145 people preferred mix number one and only 29 people preferred mix number two. This is of course only about 40 hours after the blind test video was released, so uh, the comments will go on. But so basically 70, 75% of the people uh, liked mix number one better. And it's interesting because there's a mixture between people who were listening on professional speakers, on headphones, on earbuds, on iPhones, on laptops. So the listening experience was across the board, any type and every type of media. And mix number one definitely won by a large number. Mix number one was the analog mix and mix number two was the all in the box. And here's the interesting part, the reading your comments as to why you prefer one versus the other or why you thought one was in the box and the other was analog. In fact, 103 people recognized or thought that mix number one was analog and they were right. 50 people, so less than half, thought that mix number two was out of the box and only 19 people thought that mix number one was in the box. Now, here's the interesting part. Most people thinking mix number one was the analog, they were absolutely sure, like no contest, like that's it, I can tell, period. And only, I wanna say less than 10 people were like absolutely sure that mix number two was analog and they were wrong, of course. So the vast majority of people were very sure that mix number one was analog, they were right. I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> and also they liked it better. So in fact, I repeat, only 29 people preferred mix number two. But 50 people thought that mix number two was out of the box, was with analog. And I really invite you to watch the next three videos in which I break down uh, how I swapped my analog for plugins because that's going to be very, very revealing. And I think those are the most important videos out of this test, which is fun, uh, blind test and reveal. But in the next three videos, when I break down what I did to swap my analog with plugins is where you're going to learn a lot. In fact, I want to say 80 to 90% of the people that thought that mix number two was out of the box was analog, it's because it's less bright and it's got a different low end. Some people said it's got bigger low end, it actually doesn't. The low end is bigger in mix number one and you will see in the breakdown videos, the, the following three breakdown videos, how hard it was for me to recreate the low end or try to recreate the low end with plugins. It seems like mix number two has more low end because it has less harmonic content in the mid range and the top end. So that it's one thing that is gonna be probably eye opening for you guys. Of course, it's, if it's got less top end, right? And less harmonic content is less dense in the mid range. It appears to have more low end. The low end was something very, very hard to replicate with plugins. And at the end of the day, I couldn't. In fact, many people noticed that mix number two, the low end wasn't as focused and as punchy as mix number one. And so this is interesting because nobody of the people who said that mix number two has more low end think the other way around. Didn't think, oh, it's got less harmonic content in the mid range and the top end. That's why it appears to be having more low end. And also we said only 19 people thought that mix number one was in the box. And all these 19 people still liked mix number one better, but they thought it was in the box. And they thought it was in the box because it was brighter. Simple as that. So it's interesting to see how uh, people has this preconceived idea, right? Digital is brighter and analog is softer and warmer. 
but that's really not the case. You can make a bright analog mix and a dark in, in the box mix. That's really not the, the case, but it's interesting to see how people think analog is. But I am, first of all, extremely happy because literally 75% of the people uh, recognized both the analog mix and also they prefer the analog mix. And last stats is that 15 of the 50 people who liked the mix number two better thought that that was out of the box, that that was and the analog mix. And so these are the stats. I probably had put them here somewhere in the video so you can take a look. But yeah, it's it's interesting. If you wanna go back and re-listen to the blind test now that you have the results, I could suggest you to listen to uh, a couple of things. First of all, the overall glue, and many of you guys pointed out the mix number two felt kind of disconnected, right? The elements weren't gelling as well as mix uh, number one. That's probably one of the biggest differences. If you listen to it, if you listen to the cohesiveness of the elements in the mix, mix number one definitely feels more hugging. The low end, despite mix number two seemingly having more because it doesn't have that rich top and mid range, especially the guitars is probably the most different thing between the two mixes has a more punchy and focused low end. The guitars are probably the most different thing and uh, you will see in the video why. I did a specific trick on the guitars, which wasn't on purpose, it just happened that I came up with this trick and it worked well for the mix. And by the way, if you wanna see the entire breakdown of that mix with the analog, you can buy the new Mixing Rock course at mixbustv.com, the new website. But that was one of the hardest things to recreate and uh, I, I did my absolute best, but that was probably uh, the one thing that should have gave it away. The snare, because again, I gave you pointers in, in at the beginning of the blind test video, and I told you where the hardware was. So it's not that one mix was completely analog and the other was completely in the box. Almost everybody simply said they are both great, so I'm happy about it but I gave you, I told you at the beginning of the video where the hardware was, so it was supposed to be easier for you to pick up which one was the analog and which one was in the box. The snare should have gave it away. The sound of the snare, again, you will see in the breakdown video, uh, was one thing that uh, should have gave it away. And then of course there was the crash factor that a handful of people caught the analog mix had a, a better crash factor. And you will see in the video that I pre-recorded revealing which one was which, I analyzed the levels because as you'll see in a minute, the analog mix was much, much lower in level. Uh, was lower in LUFS, was lower in peak level, and if I were to match them, it would have been a slaughterhouse. And uh, you will see at the end of this exact video, I break down uh, all the levels. And that's also another reason as to why the low end appears bigger in mix number two, because it was actually, everything was louder and it didn't have that much richness in the mid range and the top end. But all in all, I am so proud of, uh, of you guys because more than 70% recognize the analog mix and most important, almost everybody, only 29 people like mix number two, everybody else likes, liked uh, mix number one and, and they were very decisive about it. Like they were sure and um, I, honestly tried my absolute best to match the two. I was even in favor of uh, the uh, in the box mix level wise, and you will see it at the end of this video. But please, I invite you to watch the next three videos in which I break down uh, how I swap the, the, the hardware with the plugins. First of all, because it's gonna be so funny for you to see me actually struggle <laughs> and get super frustrated because I filmed it in real time. So those are not polished videos in which I pretend like it's so easy and I did this and I did that. No, you, you actually see me going, oh, damn, this is hard and I'm, I'm not sure I can do it. So they are also entertaining. But anyway, I recorded this after two days uh, from the release of the blind test to take a look at the results in the comments. Thank you all for commenting and participating to the experiment. Keep watching this video because I break down all the levels and the differences and I hope you will like it. Leave a like, comment, blah, 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 blah. So in the first episode of this series, you heard 
uh, both mixes, the analog versus the in the box. Mix number two was in the box. I did feel that I matched the perceived loudness. We've seen the uh, WLM and I was actually in favor of about one dB LUFS, which is a lot to the in the box mix to try to match <laughs> the perceived loudness, which is not just loudness, is harmonic content and cohesiveness and everything else. So I was 1 dB LUFS long term louder on the in the box mix when I did the blind test. And not only that, I turned up the in the box mix 1.5 dB, even though, even though the peak level, given both mixes at Unity, you can actually see it even here, how much thicker is the in the box mix, which is number two. If I turn it down to zero, it's still louder than the analog mix. In fact, I'm gonna show it to you. So this is how it was in the blind test, right? So I turned up the in the box mix 1.5 dB, right, to try to match it. And the peak level of the analog mix is minus 4.2. And the peak level of the in the box mix is uh, minus 1.9. So it's 2 dB, peaking 2 dB louder and it still sounds inferior. Now, if I was to match and not even the peak level, not even the peak level. So let me reset these but match unity gain. So we changed all the hardware for the plugins, matching the levels and matching the tones and everything. And if I play the analog mix, all right, both a unity and then the in the box mix a unity, the analog mix picks a minus 4.6. and the in the box mix already peaks a minus 4.2. So 0.4 dB louder than the analog mix. And the more you play it, the, the higher the difference is at unity gain. So even at unity gain, the in the box mix peaks higher than the analog mix. And this is the difference at unity gain. If I was to match the peak, <laughs> I would have to turn this one down minus 4 dB, minus 0 0.4. And this would be the difference. I'm gonna <laughs> stop here. And of course, this means what? Nothing. It means whatever you wanna think it means. Uh, this was uh, uh, something that I actually wanted to do for you guys. I was a little bit curious, even though working with analog every single day, I know the differences. I know pretty much what was going to happen. I try, I swear, I tried my best <laughs> to match everything uh, uh, the best I could. Uh, of course, not having a week to spend on it. You have the videos, you have the tests, uh, you can listen to them. I'm very curious to know what you guys think. If you like the videos, if you like the series, please consider using the Super Thanks support the channel. This was really hard to make. Uh, grab some merch, go to the new website, mixbestv.com. Grab one of the 17, 18 mixing and mastering courses there. In the new website, the, the more you get, the more discounts you get. Uh, you can book lessons, you can book me for mix and mastering and all that. It's a really cool new website. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Hands on my neck, hands get my throat, throat. Lift me up, up, man, take control. Oh. Heart is so gone, my tight, don't you know?